If you're a 6'2 in human design or you simply want to learn more about this particular profile, then this is a video for you. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're here for the first time. My name is Veronica, I'm a Meister Coach and Human Design Guide and I've spent the last 15 years helping people achieve their version of success. On this channel, I share videos about how you can use human design as an incredible tool to help you find more alignment in who you are, what you do, and how you do it. So if that sounds good and you're looking to experience more ease and more joy in your personal and professional life, then make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So today we're going to be focusing on the 6-2 profile, also known as the role model hermit. I've filmed a few of these, so what I'm going to be doing, instead of repeating myself over and over again, is I'm going to take a snippet from a previous video where I spoke about the line 6, the role model, and I'm going to take another snippet from another video where I spoke about the line 2, the hermit, and I'm going to talk you through each of those lines and the qualities, characteristics and challenges that they come with. I'm then going to come back in real time to bring those two lines together and explain to you what it means when the 6-2 profile is created as a whole. So let's dive into the details and I'll see you back here later on in the video. Profile in Human Design shows you how you're designed to show up in the world in a way that allows you to fulfill your purpose. The way that it does that is by giving you insights into two particular things. Number one is the way that you see yourself and your internal experience of who you are. And number two is how other people see you, so what you project out into the world. The duality of these two different aspects of your character are represented through profile as two different numbers. The first number gives you insights into your internal experience. This is also known as your personality number or your conscious number. And the second number gives you insights into how other people perceive you. This is also known as your design number or your unconscious number. The reason for this is because often we're not actually aware of the kind of energy we're putting out and how we're coming across to other people. These two different numbers correspond to one or six different lines in human design. These lines share particular characteristics and challenges. There are six lines in total and they can come together in a variety of different combinations. There are 12 possible combinations, so 12 different profiles that can be created by bringing together the two separate lines. For example, you might be a 2-5, a 2-4, a 6-3. If you're interested in understanding what about your chart determines your profile, or if you want to know how to find out what someone's profile is simply by looking at their body graph, then what you want to look at is your gates in both your conscious and unconscious sun. In particular, you want to look at the number after the decimal point. For example, as I'm showing you here, this person has a 0.1 in their conscious sun and a 0.3 in their unconscious sun. This means that this person's profile will be a 1-3. The conscious number always comes first and the unconscious number always comes second. Let's start off by understanding more about the line 6 and the qualities, characteristics and challenges that it brings. Line 6 is known as the role model in human design. People with this line experience three very distinct phases throughout their life's journey. These three different phases can be labelled as trial, transformation and transcendence. In the first 30 years of their life, so during phase one, the trial phase, people with line six experience life much like a line three, which is to say that they experience life through trial and error. They are experimenting. They're trying to figure things out. They're trying to figure themselves out. They are doing things and some of them are working out, some of them are not. And as they are going through that first trial phase, they're learning about themselves, they're learning about the role that they want to play, they're learning about what works and what doesn't, what they like and what they don't, what they want to stand behind and what they want to fight against. This first phase is so important because it's really what's uncovering the kinds of topics and areas that this person with this profile is then going to use later on to rise up and become a role model for. During the second phase, so this is around when someone with the line six enters their 30s. A person with this profile will go through a phase of transformation. During this period of time, a line six will start to feel a little bit more detached from the day-to-day -day workings of life. They might make less plans and might be involved with less people and might take less chances and might experiment less. They've kind of done that for the first 30 years and now they're looking to take stock of what they have lived and how they have lived so far to really try and understand what it is that they want going forward. 
and the role and position that they want to take for themselves and for others. This is a real phase of reflection, of refinement, of cutting out what no longer works to focus specifically on what does, on what feels good, on what feels positive, on what is going to help the line six make progress in the right direction for them. The third and last phase is the transcendence phase. This is when the line six really steps into the shoes of being the role model. This is when they have gone and experimented, they've learned their lessons, they have then had a period of reflection and refinement, they have come to terms with who they are, who they want to be, and in the third phase is when they are ready to start showing up with that knowledge and with that lived experience as the role model that they always looked for themselves. So by this phase is when they've been able to integrate all of their life experiences, the good, the bad and the ugly, into wisdom that they can use to make better choices but also to inspire others. Some challenges to look out for with this line is the first 30 years seem like a bit of a roller coaster. You're going up and down, you don't really know where you're going, where you want to be going, you're experimenting, you are having to come to terms with failures and disappointment, and you're really just out there in the trenches collecting life experience. Some of it will be amazing with great memories made, some of it will be challenging and will challenge you as a person and will teach you lessons that you need to learn. So the first phase really is about that self-resilience and perseverance and trusting that you will come through whatever challenges you might be experiencing and at the end of that tunnel you will be entering a new phase that is much calmer much more reflective. Now the challenges that a line six might face in the second phase of life when they are in that environment of wanting to kind of withdraw and start to look at their life a little bit more and start to challenge some of their beliefs, start to challenge some of their circumstances, start to choose to make changes, is that they can sometimes feel isolated in that process because on a practical level what that process might look like is changing your lifestyle, changing your relationships, changing who you are, quitting certain things that no longer serve you, saying goodbye to certain people that maybe just aren't a good fit for you anymore. It can be a season of shedding and letting go, which is incredible because obviously this is what we have to do in life in order to be able to grow. But oftentimes letting go of things also comes with a sense of grieving what was. So although this phase can feel a little bit isolating and even lonely at times, it's vital for you to be able to evolve into the role model that you were always meant to be. So line two is someone who is naturally gifted. It's someone who has natural talents or natural skills that make them really good at particular things. And because of this natural talent, often someone with a line two doesn't even know Number one, that they are talented. And number two, how they do what they do. It comes so natural to them that they just take it for granted and they assume that whatever they are good at, everyone else is good at too. Something that is really different for someone with a line two and can also be a challenge at times is that they don't need to learn to be good at something from a particular external source. This is an innate skill or an innate talent that comes from within. So for the line two, the focus really isn't on always gathering external information or always practicing. It's more about embracing what already comes naturally to you. These are the things that you can do with relatively little effort. These are the things that are just built into your natural behavior. Sometimes these are the things where people ask you, you know, how are you good at this thing? Or how do you, how did you learn to do that? Or how do you know how to do that? And the truth is for a line two, they often don't even know. They don't know where that talent or skill came from. They just know it's almost like a, a built in part of who you are, part of the fabric of how, the way that you're built. One of the things to look out for with line two is that because these talents, these skills come so naturally to you and because we also are brought up in a world that tells us that education is really important, that being book smart is really important, that passing tests is the way to measure your, your gifts, your talents, your skills, your knowledge base. Line twos can often not even recognize their own strengths. They often don't see that the things that come natural to them 
are so powerful and are important and are of value. And so it's really important for a line two to have that external feedback because often people noticing the things that you're good at is what is going to help you recognize them yourself. And the challenge that comes up for a line two as well is that they often think that they have got to back that natural gift with a qualification or an exam or with the more standard way of learning things and the biggest gift that a line two can give to themselves is to lean into the fact that you don't have to do that <laughs> you know there are certain things with line twos that you're just good at go with it enjoy the process and share your gifts with the world in a positive way and to make a positive difference you don't have to back those things up with getting a particular qualification of course there's a there's a time and a place where those things are needed but i think one of the biggest challenges and one of the biggest pieces of conditioning for a line two to overcome is to embrace those natural gifts and to just do something good with them now where the term hermit comes in is that when a line two is engaged in their gifts and is nurturing their talents they can very much zone out and they want to retreat and create a safe space where they can just do their thing. They can just be themselves, focus on what they like doing and engage in the things that come natural to them. And when that happens, you can even become a little bit of a recluse at times. So you have to really find the balance between this line and whatever your other line is. It's about find, finding that harmony so that you're not just locking yourself away in your hermit cave and saying goodbye to the whole world and just focusing on your own stuff and looking out for behaviors that come with that desire to be alone because for example line two can almost have this energy of like leave me alone don't talk to me don't come near me don't interrupt me don't waste my time i'm busy doing my things and so again this is where we need to look at some of the conditioning that can come with this line and some of the ways that it might be showing up in your life, of course in a positive way, but also looking out for some of the implications that this energy, this line two energy brings that you may need to be more aware of, especially when you are relating to other people and to the rest of the world. I'm back in real time, ready to talk about what happens when the line six, the role model, and the line two, the hermit, come together to create the six two profile, also sometimes referred to as the exemplary human. Someone with this profile has a conscious six line, meaning that they see themselves as a role model. They see themselves as someone who needs to step up and lead by example. The problem is that often we are so self-critical and we're surrounded by people and conditioning that lead us to believe that we don't have what it takes in order to be a role model. So this profile is really about stepping into who you were born to be, recognizing yourself as a role model and allowing your external behavior to match what you think about yourself on the inside. If you're 60, one of the best ways that you can find alignment and harmony in this profile is to start being the role model that you needed when you were growing up. So think back, think of when you were younger, the kind of support, guidance, inspiration that you needed. What was it that you craved? What was it that you felt that you lacked? Whether it was in your social circle, within your family, at school, in previous job roles that you've had, what kind of role model were you looking for? What kind of example were you hoping to find to make you feel reassured and supported and encouraged? Whatever that is, whatever that role model that you were looking for was, is exactly what you are here to become. With the line six and the line two coming together, you were born to be wise. You were born to have a sense of gravitas and a sense of authority. You were born to be naturally skilled and naturally talented at something or some things. So it's really important for you to start to recognize those qualities in you and to start to own them and to start to celebrate them and embrace them so that not only you can step into the shoes that you were always meant to fill, but so that you can also start to have the impact that you have always craved. Now you might notice that because on the outside you are the hermit, so what you're projecting outwards is the energy of the hermit and as we discussed this is the energy that is both naturally talented but also that wants to hide, that wants to retreat, that wants to be in its own space and this can lead to you mentally wanting to do something and consciously wanting to do something but your body and your energy 
almost fighting against you, almost trying to keep you back, trying to keep you safe. And sometimes that means in hiding. So in order for you to find balance and make progress in an aligned way, it's about recognizing yourself internally as the wise sage and role model that you are. And then starting to notice how you behave and the kind of energy that you put out. Because that line too, whether it's on the inside or the outside, it can have this tendency to want to hide. And if you're not aware of that, and if you don't manage that effectively, then you can almost stop yourself from shining fully. And to bring it all together, it really is about you moving through life, going through those different phases that the line six is familiar with, and then using that lived experience and your natural talents and abilities to make a difference. Now let's pay attention to the fact that line six for you is on the inside. So it's the first number that you'll see in your profile. What this means is that you will have a transpersonal karma. A transpersonal karma is a fancy way of saying that you will find true fulfillment by making an impact and sharing your gift with others. Unlike the one threes and the two fives and the one fours, Yours is not an internal process, it's an external one. So you will find clarity and confidence and fulfillment and joy by having an impact and sharing that impact with the world. So make sure that you're not getting stuck in cycles of going inwards and only keeping yourself to yourself because you really are designed to be out in the world, sharing that wisdom, sharing that knowledge, sharing your skills for the benefit of all. Now, something to look out for with the combination of the Y6 and the talented two is to not lean into perfectionism and micromanaging others. It can be really easy for you to want to give advice and to want to tell people what they can do better and how they can better themselves and how they can do things differently because you are so wise, you are so knowledgeable, you're so experienced, and you've got those natural skills and talents. But be mindful that when you push your advice onto others, it may not be well received. You need to be extra mindful of when, how, and why you're sharing your wisdom with others to ensure that it's being done in an aligned way so that you don't experience backlash and resistance. Okay guys, I hope you found this introduction to the 6 suit profile helpful. If you would like to learn more about your profile, or your design in general, then you can learn more by either booking a human design reading with me or by accessing one of the free or paid resources on my website. I will leave all the links down below where you can find more information. As always, if you have any questions or if you have any requests for future videos, please leave them in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does make my day and help my channel grow. If you would like to see more content like this and understand more about human design, then make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I hope to see you here in the next video. Bye guys.